Singapore's first Olympic gold medalist Joseph Schooling is in hot water after admitting to using cannabis. Now when this news hit the stands, people were shook. I mean the entire nation was essentially in shambles and things perhaps got a little bit out of control. And we're going to talk about it today. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's real simple. All you gotta do is press those buttons down below and best of all, it's free. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be a lot cooler if you did. So how did we get here? Well, the story begins earlier in May this year when Joseph Schooling was in Vietnam for the SEA Games, where it should be noted, he won two gold, one bronze. Now, apparently, according to the news reports, he took cannabis while he was there and he tested negative for it and then he confessed to it after. And the reason why he was able to compete at the SEA Games was because he was under a short-term disruption from national service, when in fact he actually only enlisted earlier in January of this year. Now on top of this, there was another national swimmer, Amanda Lim, who was also involved in this same situation, and then she was issued a stern warning by the CNB. However, it seemed like from the entire news cycle so far, the focus of attention was largely placed on Joseph Schooling. And because of this, Joseph Schooling has been barred from training or competing for the rest of his national service stint and that could possibly mean that he would miss out on next year's SEA Games and the Asian Games. Also, it seems like the Singapore National Olympic Council will be convening a disciplinary hearing for both of these national swimmers, so it does seem like things are getting pretty serious. So when this news broke out, Schooling then came forward with an apology. I'm sorry that my actions have caused hurt to everyone around me, especially to my family and the young fans who look up to me. I gave in to a moment of weakness after going through a very tough period of my life. I demonstrated bad judgement and I'm sorry. I made a mistake and I'm responsible for what I've done. I will make amends and write what is wrong. I won't let you down again. So that's pretty much a quick summary of what went down, but to be honest, when I first heard about all the media coverage surrounding this story, my first thought was, how is this even news? I mean, while I do agree that both of these swimmers deserved punishment for what they did, I felt like as the news cycle went on with this story and more people chimed in with their unsolicited opinions, things seem to be getting blown out of proportion. For instance, just take a look at the number of headlines that came out during this 24-hour window when the news first broke. I mean, what's going on over here? Like, it's coming across as a bit overkill. Like, why are you so obsessed? Also, just to point out, some of these headlines are really last warning. Like, what is this one? Joseph Schooling, a hero, has foolishly tripped. Let's pick him up. Who say you want us to pick him up? You tell me. And the word foolishly? Really, that was certainly a choice of words over there. Like if we want to talk about supporting our athletes, these kind of headlines aren't doing them any favours in my opinion. There were like so many opinion pieces and people really just needed to like chill out about this. You know, just keep quiet for a bit. You know, give me one silent clap. Think about that for a second because I actually think that there are more pressing issues that should be discussed in the news apart from this one story. Like what about the repeal of 377A? Like have we forgotten about that? Or what about the recent rise in outrage of modesty cases? And don't even get me started on people peeing on the MRT. These are just some of the many stories that we should actually be talking about. And don't even get me started on the Facebook comment section. It was a hot mess. People were talking as if they knew the law like the back of their hand and then talking about his family, playing mother, father all. Like it was a bit much. Like you you got no gold medal, don't talk. I think those people should only talk if they can water bend as well as an Olympic gold medalist swimmer. If not, just yum. So amidst all of this chaos, Hugo Boss, one of Joseph Schooling's sponsors, actually came forward and said that they stand by him, which I thought was pretty cool. Our Law and Home Affairs Minister also came forward to show his support, saying, These swimmers have worked hard, given much. They brought glory to Singapore. Both Schooling and Amanda have been treated in the same way how others have been treated. I'm sure Singaporeans will be gracious and remember the wonderful things these two young people have done and give them our support and backing. Now, this was actually quite surprising to me because it was quite a positive tone in this message. And of course, everyone had plenty of things to say about this entire story considering how it involves a high-profile person like Singapore's first Olympic gold medalist. Now, I asked you guys what you thought about the entire situation and here's what you had to say. Don't really care. No big deal. Uh, not my problem. Why is it even news? Yep. I've been asking myself that question as well. Herbal schooling. That's out of pocket. I mean, you better watch out, huh? Please, can we stop talking about it? Yeah, can we stop? I mean, even as I was preparing to make this video, there were multiple new headlines coming out. Like, what else is there to say? You've talked about every single scrap of material left in this story. There's really nothing more left that we have already heard. News outlets milking it like a newborn baby. Well, that's definitely one way to put it. Let him live, OMG. True. I don't think he deserves a harsh punishment as it was overseas and had integrity to own up. I kinda agree with this sentiment over here, but also there's so many layers to this because it also touches on our drug policy 
which is a whole other kind of worms. Punishment too light shouldn't have exceptions just because he is national hero. Now I've seen this same comment appear on my feed quite a number of times, but I think it's important to remember that according to our Law and Home Affairs Minister, the treatment and punishment that both of these swimmers receive would be the same that anyone else would have gotten as well. So I don't really think there's any special treatment going on over here, but what's different in this case I think is because it involves individuals who are under the spotlight and would definitely draw a lot of publicity because they are national athletes. Give him a effing break. Yeah, I kind of agree with this as well because if you look at what he said in his apology statement, he was also going through a tough period in his life, which also alludes to the fact that he lost his dad as well. What's done overseas should stay there. This is interesting because there were a lot of people who were commenting about how it feels like there's an overreach in terms of the jurisdiction and the drug policy that we have here. Like, why is it that what we do overseas is also subject to the law over here? But I'm no lawyer, I don't have all the specific knowledge needed to go into a debate about that. But I definitely think there's a conversation to be had. Doesn't bother me. Just leave him the F alone. I don't know why, but this comment kind of gave me leave Britney alone kind of energy. Blown out of proportion, it was not even done in SG. We make too much of a big deal out of it, SMH. Shout out to drugs. Yeah, maybe this is not the best time to give a shout out to drugs. You might want to hold back on that. Scapegoat drama, trying to warn people to not bring cannabis in from Thailand. Yeah, this is an interesting take for sure because with a high profile individual involved in a case like this, it does seem like the government wants to use this individual as an example for everyone to know how the rules about drug use are enforced even when you're overseas. Government living in the 80s. Smoking pot overseas shouldn't be criminalized. Again, this goes back to Singapore's drug policy and our hardline stance on any sort of drug use. But I also came across a couple of interesting conversations about the medicinal properties of cannabis and how it actually could be helpful in those situations for certain individuals. But again, with where our current policies are, I don't think that's very likely in the near future. Just let him breathe. Okay. Breathe as in some fresh air or more cannabis. You might want to be specific. Show Singapore's obsession with clean, pristine personas and aversion towards mistakes. Yep, points were made. Milo needs to release the cannabis edition for real. Now, I don't know about that, but maybe that's why they've been so quiet all this while. Something's in the works. No idea. SG laws should be enforced only for something that happened in this country. Someone majorly pautoed them lah. That's the real snake, lol. Now that's the conspiracy theory of the year cause whoever that might be involved in this scenario here as a snitch, you better ask yourself, look at the mirror. Are you happy with what you did? Hey, whichever one of you anyhow go pauto Joseph Schooling, better own up now because snitches get stitches. And that's on period. Think about it for a second because in terms of his contributions to Singapore and his service to the nation, Time and time again, this man has proved that he has served and served the nation, if you get my drift. I also came across a couple of comments noting that Singapore doesn't deserve our sporting heroes because we have this sort of crab mentality which refers to the idea of crabs in a bucket clawing at each other preventing from anyone to climb out or above them. Essentially talking about how if I can't have it, so can't you. And to some extent, I feel that that's pretty true in this case. It does seem like many people are so ready to tear down a national icon like Joseph Schooling without considering the fact that he's been under pretty intense public scrutiny over the past couple of years. People were first mocking him about his weight. It bothered me a little bit. Yeah, for sure, man. And then they also mocked his performance during the Tokyo Olympics last year. And then on top of all of this, he also had to deal with a tragic loss in his family. He's also been very vocal about his mental health and trying to make sure he's able to cope with all of the stress that takes a toll on him. Now, I totally get the argument that some people have about how public figures in general should be held to a higher standard. But I do think in this example here, when there are extenuating circumstances involved, that the conversation surrounding Joseph Schooling sometimes crossed the line and became more malicious than it should have been. And as this story unfolded, I was also reminded of a somewhat similar case in the US involving an Olympic track athlete, Shikari Richardson. Now, she's well known for her very fast speeds and also running with very long nails. Now, the thing is she was also suspended from the Tokyo Olympics last year when she failed the drug test after having found to have taken marijuana. And the thing is, when she came forward to explain what happened, she clarified that she actually took it because she was dealing with the fact that her biological mother had passed. And the clincher here is that she actually found out about this news when she was doing an interview with a random interviewer who told her at the time. So of course it was very traumatic for her and that's why she ended up doing what she did. And I saw some similarities in the way the public reacted to these athletes in question. And I guess it goes back to the idea of how people are so willing to build up a celebrity or an icon and they're just as willing to tear them down when things go south. So I guess with all that we've talked about so far, I guess it boils down to three main things that I would like to conclude on. The first being our national drug policy. Now we know that there's a zero drug use policy here in Singapore. Whether or not this policy would be changed or reviewed in the near future, 
based on not just this case but multiple other cases alone remains to be seen. I think with all of the media attention surrounding this story, it might just help to move the needle in some ways. But as to whether Singapore's drug policy would eventually catch up with that of other drug liberal nations around the world, one can only hope. Now the second thing is about our national service deferment policy. Now if you don't know, Joseph Schooling actually got to defer his national service for a period of about 7 years from 2014 to 2021. I think there's definitely room for discussion in terms of whether or not this deferment policy can be adjusted for individuals with perhaps a special talent in arts or sports. But again, there's a lot of layers to this discussion about how do we qualify what's a special talent and whether or not it is equal or fair in terms of the treatment with other national service men. I mean, we can talk about it all we want, but just take a look at a recent example of how Ben Davis decided to leave Singapore for good so that he could pursue his career in soccer. I mean, that is a clear-cut example of how the current policy that we have for deferment might just be pushing people out of the system. But that is definitely a conversation for another day. And finally, the third point I want to discuss is the support systems that we have in place for our athletes. Now, in this example of Joseph Schooling here, he's been placed under an SAF mandated urine test regimen as part of his rehabilitation. But I'm curious to know whether there are other measures in place, not just for him, but for other athletes that would support their mental health as well. Now, at the end of the day, I do think that it's very unlikely that we would see someone with such a singular talent like Joseph Schooling in this lifetime or at least my lifetime. So I wonder if when we look back on this period in Singapore's sporting history, would we agree with the treatment he received and how it might have caused disruptions to his sporting career? And then think to ourselves whether it was all worth it after all. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Now that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what I should react to next. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO you only live once.